went into the donut shop today to get the donuts so we could have donuts out here. And uh, I meet the same lady every week, and I carry my badge, not for anybody to know who I am, but so she'll know that I'm doing this for the church, that there's, there's a point in, uh, in meeting somebody who's on a spiritual journey and even buying donuts. So the lady and I have become kind of friends. I don't know her name, but she, she lights up when I come in on Sunday morning around 7.30 or quarter to 8. And, and I light up when I see her because I know just right in a few minutes there's going to be a sour cream glazed donut for me. I get my one. I get my one. And uh, so I, uh, I was checking out this morning. And as I was at the, uh, I was going to the register and I, there's a little customer service island in the middle of Publix. And as I passed by the group, I, I just felt like the girl was, was watching me. And I'm like, oh, what did I do? What, is something wrong? And, and I go, I've got three boxes of donuts, you know. And maybe that's she's looking at, this pudgy guy with three boxes of donuts. What's wrong with you, man? So anyway, I turned around and I said, can you? And, I, and there was no lights on the registers. I would have had to walk away now. So I said, can you, can you take me? She says, yes, I can. I said, well, good, good. So I sat down. And then as soon as I did, some other guy came, a little British guy, an older fellow. Wasn't older than me, but he's older. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting up there. I'm pretty old. So, so this older fellow, he looks over and makes a wise comment. Something I would do if I were him, you know, just the guy next to me. He didn't see my badge. He didn't know what was going on. I was, I'm kind of well-dressed. I don't have a tie, but I'm kind of well-dressed. He, and he's not. But he, he makes this wise crack. He says, hey, where's the party? You know, he sees these donuts there. And I said, hey, it's not a party, but we're going to church. And I said, i got to bring these donuts because I can't. I'm the worst preacher in town. I can't get him to come if I don't give him donuts. He's, he, he didn't say anything. Maybe I freaked him out because he did Yeah, I don't know whether he didn't believe I was the worst preacher or whether I was going to take him to the church. or I don't know what, what was going on there. But uh, anyhow, it's good, good to have everybody here. Oh, my gosh. My Havendale crowd, you've got that whole pew going on right there. And uh, I, I love it. Uh, I love our new people that are coming in uh, every week. And that was your mom that brought you today? Okay. And uh, so just, just blessing upon blessing. I got to hang out with the Esperanza boys yesterday. Oh, yeah, all them guys over there. And uh, four, I think four of them and, and one of me. And I, I didn't have a chainsaw, but I did have a tractor. So we, we worked together, and I heard from the other pastor, Pastor Javier. He said he's sore in the same place that I am. My left bicep muscle right here close to there is strained or stressed. But we moved a lot of stuff yesterday. We got some stuff down. It's time to take the communion. We, yes, we did it, dear. Oh, you didn't get any. I did. Okay, so yes. I was waiting for everybody to do it one joint. Okay. Oh, yeah. See, yeah, customs are different, I guess, in different churches. Gotcha. Yeah. So I'm in the preaching mode now. I switched that over to communion mode, preaching mode now. Uh, and so I forgot where I was, Maureen. Where was I? I was talking about God. Bicep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got, we share an injury. And I already told you about my legs not being broken. The big angel helped me out. I'm not sure who it was. I only know of two, Michael and Gabriel. There might be another that's really big and strong. But he kept that tree from, from crushing me, and I am very, very thankful. Thankful to be alive, thankful to be here walking on my own two feet, right? We feel good. It feels good to be united with the brothers. There's something about that, man. People, even of different cultures and different languages, coming together in the name of the Lord and being one, one purpose, one people. We are there. We are there. I have a sermon that was entitled, that is entitled, all in favor, say aye. aye. Now, you oh. know, I is spelled in, in, Brit, in, in Irish. You know, I, Captain, I, like the pirates. I, or I. It's A-Y-E. I know that. I just wanted you to know. I know that. This is called a pun. This is called a pun. The I, say I, is about the, in the lesson today. And I didn't really get to it. So there's a, like a three-part lesson here out of this one lesson. We're going to examine the whole scripture, and I'm just going to touch on the first part, which is in Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 19. And most of you can quote this verse. I don't know why it has to do with money. Why would we know how to quote a verse that has to do with money? Anyway, so before I get into the, the scripture and the lesson today, I want you to know that my wife and I have moved around quite a bit in 10 years, and we've, we've, uh, we both came together as two single people, I met her at a church over in Lakeland. The church is still going, even without us. 
Uh, I hear they miss us tremendously. But anyhow, yeah, <laughs> we're here. We, we're, we're still married. We're still doing good after 10 years and kicking. Uh, but, the, you know, when you're single and you're an adult that my age, I won't choose just a child. I have a child bride. I'm, I know there's a disparity of age, but that, I don't care. She's 100 years younger than me. 100 years. And I'm st you should say, Alan, you're a stud. Oh, you got a wife 100 years younger. No, don't say that. Don't, I don't need that. But we, when we came together, we both had a bunch of stuff. We had a bunch of stuff. We had a house full of stuff. I had a house. I had a house full of stuff. I was busting out. She had a house. She had four bedrooms. I only had three. But she, she had four bedrooms. And anyhow, furniture and stuff and junk. She had a boat. That did help with the, date, with the dating process. The boat did help. Right. And she knew how to back up that trailer, too. That really helped. That, she knows how to do that. Anyhow... So over, over that period of time, uh, as you accumulate things, we had like double of stuff, dishes and forks and knives, still have some. Hers are neatly in the row. Mine are stuck in this all, all in one drawer, whatever, whatever was Alan's before. And I, I don't understand all that, but she's not here so I can say it. Oh, wait, she's going to see this. Michelle, I love you. You are my favorite wife. My favorite wife. Anyhow, some of that stuff, yeah. And, and they believe me. They believe that I, I believe it. Anyhow, there's a lot of stuff that's too good to throw away, but I don't want to keep it, right? So it's like junk. I don't it's like treasure, if you want to call it treasure, but it's not really because I don't want to, I already have one. How many pressure washers does a man need? Two. Two? <laughs> Just in case one breaks down. It's like men. If one falls down, the other can pick him up. No, I'm, I'm afraid that does not work. Uh, Home Depot has a rental yard. I can go get me one if mine breaks down. So we, have, we had extra stuff and, and no place to put it. And it was really a tough decision. But, uh, and then again, a few years ago, I was involved for many years in a mission to Jamaica. And I would go over there and uh, take money to the Jamaican uh, people in the, in the country, they yeah. could not possibly do in, in 40 years what we do in one two-week period. A two-week period of missionaries coming from the U.S., bringing with us 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 U.S. dollars and bodies to come in us beside the, the men and the women, and the women, men and women are workers over in Jamaica. Whoa, can they, the I mean, concrete, they'd be slinging buckets up there on that ladder. So we would raise money and it was a worthy cause Yes. But people would give us their junk, mm -hmm. just like we had, and we turned it into cash. That's all right. Well, what do you do when you've had two garage sales, and all the good junk is gone, and you're stuck with the bad junk? You put it in a box, if you're me, you put it in a box, put it on a shelf, and you let the rats get to it. That's it's probably right. no good now. I mean, that's, that's my treasure? Are you kidding? That's what supports the ministry. Oh, well. We, done a, we did a lot of good... Uh, money raising for that, the fundraising. Amen. And uh, one weekend we raised over $2,000. Wow. The Lord blessed us. And that was other people junk, just yeah. stuff, you know. Praise the Lord. I, had, I wanted the barbells. I don't know why. I, I busted my muscles trying to pick up things. But I uh, wanted it, but we, we got a guy that offered me 20 bucks for him. We sold him the barbells. Said, so he got the barbells. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Amen? Yeah. Yes. Our scripture for today is found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 24. I want to read the whole thing to you, but I'm really going to just concentrate on uh, 19 to 21 today. Do not store for up for yourselves treasures on earth like Alan does. Oh, that, that's, not, that's not in there. Yeah. Where moths, and in the, in the NIV it says vermin. I'll get to that later. Where moths and vermin destroy. Where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is. Get this. That's where your heart is also. Oh, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, and that word healthy is actually generous in the, in the Greek, and your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, and the Greek word is stingy right there, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? So you stingy people, you who listen up here. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God 
and money. That's, that's the scripture Jesus poured out to these people on that day. He's the master teacher. He tells his audience about the storage of junk that does not last. That's really, that's what he's talking about. When he refers to the treasure on earth, that it is, destruct, it is destructible and perishable. Does anybody have somebody like my daughter, Ashlyn? Yes, I'm talking about you, Ashlyn. She is the one in our family who checks that box, sell by date. And if that thing is over a week expired, where does it end up? In la basura. You got me? In the trash can, right. It's all, and so we have good stuff that's in the trash can. I don't care. Hey, I drink the coffee after, the, if there's still some left in the pot, I'll let it sit there till the next day and the oh, next day. No. When it starts getting a green cr crust over it, I give it up. I give it up. <laughs> Before I, I will heat it up in the microwave in a, in a minute. No, oh, some, some of you just checked out on me, didn't you? You, yes. you don't want to be here anymore, right? No. What's that got to do with treasure? Well, let me tell you something. One man's treasure is another man's trash. <laughs> so, so for Ashlyn at our house, she's our, I know you got somebody at your house. Somebody got to be at your house checking these labels, saying, you know, this is expired. We really shouldn't drink this, mom or dad or kid. You know, and, and I, I want to talk about why, why would they do that? Would it be a matter of health? Is it just because it's unhealthy? Maybe a fear of getting sick from the food. Maybe, maybe that's what the problem is. Someone who knows more than you are or I has determined by scientific study how long this thing will go before it is unfit for human consumption. <laughs> Human consumption. Boy, and we're supposed to obey the rules, right? I mean, somebody above us, a more intelligent than us, made a rule, and we should obey it. Come on, Carlos, you're right. Just shake your head. Yes, that's true. <laughs> When's the last time you obeyed a rule? Oh, yesterday. Yesterday. It's been a long time since yesterday, right? Man. All right. Well, perhaps there are a few mommies in here today who truly care about the health of their families, their babies, Maybe that's the reason. And you know, this is a very honorable reason, if that is the reason. That's very honorable, to be protective of those that you love in that way. Jesus makes it plain that all treasure is not valuable for honorable reasons. All the treasure that we store up is not got that honorable sign tag on it. It may be valuable to you, but is that treasure that... Is that the treasure that gives wealth? Is that, is that the thing that puts us in a higher tax bracket? Do you ever feel bad for rich people? Come on now. No. <laughs> I figured that. You know, I do. I feel bad for it. And I'm not a rich guy. But I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm well off. I'm well off. I have two pair of shoes. I was supposed to bring in some number 10s, wasn't I? Somebody needed shoes. I forgot. Man. I've got, I've got some extras that I'm, I'm going to get rid of. Uh, not get rid of them, but, but give them to somebody who needs them. Hey, most well-off people that I know do not consider themselves to be rich. They're just, they're just well-off. they got enough. They're, they're not rich. But uh, rich is more like the Kardashians, right? Isn't that rich? You see them on TV? I don't even watch them, but I know of them just from you know, just being around. The Kardashians this and the Kar Sometimes they're on my Yahoo newsreel thing. You know, the Kardashians did this and the Kardashians did that. <laughs> Who are the Kardashians? What do they do? What I heard they do is they just show their life. That's it. That's all they do. They, they just have a life, and we get to see it, and they're rich. Well, how about movie stars? Do you consider them rich? rich? Yeah, man, they're filthy rich, right? They got enough to put poisonous ads on the TV and everything. How about politicians? All of them are trying to help the poor people, but they're all stinking rich and billionaires themselves. Not all of them, but most of them. I mean, you, you know. Anyway, people like that, I think, are the rich people of this world. And it's strange to think of all the money invested by those rich people in security systems or guards or guard dogs or some way to keep the, as they say in Jamaica, the thief out. Yeah. Got to keep the thief out, the thief. The thief. Now, you have to be careful if you go to Jamaica and you want to talk patois because the word thief and the word teeth are very familiar, very, very close to each other. And I was in a conversation one time about teeth, and it ended up I was talking about thief. So the guy was looking at me, what are you talking about? Thief? I don't know. Some, the thief chewed up, his, chewed up his, uh, his curry too long or something. Anyhow. <laughs> so speaking of thieves, though, speaking of thieves, 
At my last church family, there was an elderly lady with disabilities. I think there must have been a memorial service maybe yesterday. Yes. Mary Eva. Yes. I miss her a lot. And um, I, she, was, she was one that would come into our worship service. Uh, she, you, you've seen some folks like this, disabled. They've got the, the oxygen uh, thing around them. They carry a little tank with them. Or maybe mm -hmm. they have a battery-operated purse that has the oxygen coming in. She, she was bad off physically, but she loved the church. She loved praising the Lord. Amen. And one day, as, and she lived by herself in this nice, it was a nice mobile home, but it was very modest. I mean, she didn't have a lot of this world's treasures. But I'm going to tell you, that heart of that woman was pure gold. One day, you want to talk about a pastor who come unglued and about ready to find somebody and beat them down. Mm. Somebody called her and said they were a computer company that her emails had been act, hacked, all of her pictures, that her computer itself, and that they needed, she needed to pay them money in order to, to protect those photographs in her computer, mm. and, and somebody with a foreign accent, and somebody convinced her, and she did not have money. She barely got on with whatever was coming in from Social Security, and that and she gave them two over two thousand dollars of her savings mm. to get them to fix her computer. Which wasn't broken. It wasn't broken. It was a scam. I myself have fallen for it once, and then they're on the phone d doing stuff on my computer. I'm going, "Who are you again? We're Microsoft. I don't think so. I'm calling the police." He didn't care. Mm. He didn't care. The thieves. They're bold. They're. But I. I just wanted him to know he's going to hell for that for stealing the widow's might, for taking money from somebody who is so needs it just to live, just to put groceries in her bag. Mm -hmm. Man, that made me mad. Does that make you mad when people take advantage of somebody who is poor and, and, and out, and the little bit they have, they take it from them? Man, that criminal. Oh, just wonder how hot hell is. I think it'd be hot. <laughs> I just don't know. You don't want to go there. I don't want to go there, but I, I think there are some people that may experience God's wrath and whatever that looks like, and I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there either, no. Well, so I want to talk to you about thieves because they want to store up as much as they can of other people's money in their account, and that's the motivation, is to take from you and to put in their own account. Thieves are one way that are the earth's treasure is gone that this this earthly stuff that we store up the king james uses the word rust where moth and rust corrupt and where thieves break through and steal and it's always in conjunction with the moths i thought today would you like a little in-depth uh examination of of those words yes. say yes thank you oh yes. i love that okay we got it well let's look at moths first we all know what moths are. We all have moths. We all, if we have a light bulb on our front porch, we know what a moth <laughs> is, right? They're all buzzing around the light bulb. But all, sometimes they get in the house. Yes. And they're in the pantry. In and they find it. Oh, in the clothes. Oh, so now you're hitting it there. That's mm -hmm. right. So the moth is a flying insect that uses woolen materials, typically woolen materials, yes. to store their larvae. Mm -hmm. They lay eggs in your clothes. Yeah. And it makes the clothing, the wool, brittle. It takes something from the wool, and so it makes a hole in there. So when you pull out your woolen sweater or your woolen jacket or whatever, there might be a little crumbly spot right there. So in Jesus' day, the people that heard him say where moth corrupts, they knew exactly what it was because they had a full-time job of shooing them suckers away. They were trying to get those things out of the house. Now, they're just, just in case you're one of those people that looks for natural remedies, there are a couple of ways that uh, don't involve uh, nuclear uh, things and, and, and uh, you know, things that, uh, you know, blue, blue lights or whatever, they shine, things that dissolve elements. They, but in the old days, they would use vinegar. They would wash the walls of the, of the closet with vinegar. And I think maybe the vinegar would run off the moths. They say, I ain't going to plant an egg in this place. It stinks in here. I guess. I, I don't know how to think exactly like a moth, but I'm pretty close. I'll do the mind meld with the, the right. Vulcan mind meld and get it. That's all right. And, uh, yeah. And the other, the other thing is, uh, what is the other thing? The other thing is that um, the uh, fish oil is another thing that they would have. They would have, in the, in the first century, they would have fish oil. And so they would put a little trap there, and those moths would be 
would be uh, attracted to that fish oil. You can still do that today. Yeah. You don't need a special moth light that has certain properties. So the fish oil was effective. It kept it, but it was a constant battle. Do you get what's going on? The people of that day and, and you today understand that there are thieves that still want to break in and take even stupid stuff from you that you don't want them to do. And that there are bugs out there that if you don't keep your house bug free, that they're going to come in and they're going to destroy. They're going to lay eggs and stuff. Who here loves cockroaches? No, but don't raise your hand. Nobody. No, well, that's, that's kind of part of the other part, is, is that vermin, the word vermin is in my NIV, and it took the, the, the place of, of rust. So I'm, I'm, I'm confused. You know, what is it? I know what rust is. I'm on a farm. I got lots of rust on a farm. I feel sometimes in my bones there's a little rust that might have left, you know, found its place down in my back and legs and stuff. In my, in my arm today, I got some rust in there. But it's, it's something that is useless. In the, in the Greek word, there's a word for rust that really means poison. They use, they use it another way to mean poison. So rust is falling off of steel. The steel is no longer good when it, when it turns into a pile of rust. I mean, and Bondo, I know, all you mechanics, you'll, Bondo, that's what will fix that thing there. Even that can fall off if rust gets behind that. So rust is something that is deteriorating. The word, though, that is used for both the vermin and the, and the rust is it means to, to be the act of eating. Do you get that? Yes. Let me explain something to you. That, not her. She, she's got it. But everybody else here, listen. This is what eating does. You take an apple. Mm. And you take that apple and you say, hmm, I'm hungry. I want me an apple. What do you do? You take these big old teeth right here. You, go, ah, mm. you <laughs> chew that apple. It's never going to look the same. Mm. It's going to have a great big white gash in it right there. And you're inside. What are you doing now? Taking the rest of them. <laughs> And you're chewing that thing up. It's turning into a royal mess in there. It's, you've got saliva squirting. And you're making it gushy and mushy. And the next thing you know, you go, Ooh, and it goes down a pipe. And it's being crushed and pushed and down there. And then it falls in a vat of acid. Right in there. In there. How does that sound? Does that sound pretty corrosive? Yes. I think Jesus was dead on the money. <laughs> and when they start talking about rust and vermin and whatever that deteriorates a thing, that the whole act of eating thing is kind of metaphorical. It's a metaphorical. Did I get that right, dear? I hope so, because they said meta metaphorically, it means that it's being destroyed. Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you, the first century people, they would have got this. They would have got this. So... Did you all say ooh? I thought you might say ooh when I got to this falling into the pit of the acid right there, the pool. Okay. All right. Um, listen, things that I want to buy are shiny for just a little bit, and then what happens? Steve doesn't know because he washes and waxes that car every single day. But others of us who do not wash and wax their stuff every day... Roland, I know he's still got some tools that are nice and shiny. He cleans them with a toothbrush before he goes home, and not me. I throw them in the bucket. There's a little water left in a little rust line down in the bottom. I know what corrosion. Things that I want to, to keep good are shiny for just a little bit. I'm talking about me. You guys have your own story. But after a while, they start to look like something, something got a rusty and something I might want to retire to the back of the woodshed. Do you get that our treasure on earth is temporary yeah. with lots of ways to lose it? Folks, do you get that? What is heavenly treasure? That's the question. Yeah. Somebody was asking me that. What is heavenly treasure, Pastor Allen? I don't know. Oh, I do. I read it. I looked it up. Number one, it is indestructible. That's what I understand about heavenly treasure. You can't destroy it. It's not up for grabs like it's not going to rust. The moth can chew on a heavenly treasure all at once and he's not going to get anywhere or she. She's, it's she, probably she's, they lay eggs, right? It's got to be she's. So, and then, and then we can secure it from thieves. Heavenly treasure is secure. And it doesn't have locks, doesn't have a gate, doesn't have security dogs that bite. If you've got a security dog like mine, you might want to bring a Kleenex with you because you're going to get licked all over. And, you know, it's going to be probably the cat food he just ate and salivated all over. Sometimes the chicken food. But the guard dog, you know, if you have a real talk guard dog that, you don't have one either, but if you have a real guard dog that actually chews on people, your heavenly treasure is, is safe. You don't need one of those. You don't have to feed that dog and train that dog. You don't have to keep him in a certain place of your house and, and use that square footage. 
And number okay. three, the thing, the third thing I know about this, this treasure that is indestructible, it is from heaven. It is yeah. heavenly. It is not from this world. It is from the, the high up world. There's a hymn. Maureen, you're going to love this. There's a hymn that I love these words, and the words go like this. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, the Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me and from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. You remember that old song? That's a good old song, isn't it? That's a good old hymn right there. How much is a clear conscience worth to you? Everything. How much is your soul worth to you? Everything. How much would you pay for someone to walk with you through the troubled times in your life instead of going alone. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through 27, the word of the Lord says this, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in His Father's glory with the angels, and then He will reward each person according to what they have done. Important concept. What you do is the answer. Oh, here it is again, that same old crusty debate about who, what ends up with people drawing lines against each other. You can't do anything to deserve your salvation. I get that. Jesus did the heavy lifting there. It's a crazy argument. Maybe the heathens have it, or the atheists, or whoever, they're both the same. The atheist is a heathen. But whoever it is out there, and I don't want to just get into a name-calling contest, because they'll start calling me Christian. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I wouldn't mind that at all. I'd be proud to wear that name. Amen. I would not be proud to be called an atheist or, or a heathen or something, something pagan. But I, I couldn't save myself. Nobody can save themselves by being so good that it doesn't require the blood of Jesus to pay for their sin. Here, here's, the, here's the key, guys. And I've got to hurry up. I'm running out of time. Yep. Breathe and talk. <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> I, I, I took in too much oxygen and burn, burn, a, burn a cell I had up there. Here's the thing. That's all right. Here's the thing. You can't, you can't be good enough. This is the thing. This, listen, you got me now? You with me? Yes. Yeah, stutter, stutter, stutter. This is the thing. The God is perfect. Amen. And he will not be in presence of anything that is imperfect. Not allowed. All around him, as I, as I shared that communion uh, meditation with you, all around God is perfection, 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 holiness, sacredness, all the same kind of stuff. If you have imperfection, you ain't allowed in his presence. He's not going to have it. So if you have one sin in your life, you're imperfect. And you can't, you can't be in the presence of the Lord. It was a sad state of affairs. In, even in the days of Moses, they'd have to sacrifice, they'd have to kill something. Someone would have to die for their sins so that they could have the high priest go in once a year and present this dead thing in front of God and say, okay, we killed this because we can't be good enough. Is this good enough for you? And he, you know, okay, it's temporary, but okay, I'll reset the clock one more year. You can just, you know, try to be perfect again for this year. And tick, 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 boom, you know, Passover, let's kill that lamb, let's get it on there, high priest in there, all by himself, God, please accept this dead animal, because we can't do it right. Amen. And, then, and then God said, no, no, we've got a better idea, Jesus, the yeah. lamb of God, the Lord. if you present him before me, then I will accept that sacrifice for all the sins, but there are some rules attached to it. You can't just get everybody, it just doesn't get it. You've got to have, you've got to... Accept the Lord as your Lord. Yes. You must live 
your life following Jesus. Are you with me there? Amen. You must live your life in appreciation of the purchase of your soul. Amen. You can't go around acting like you deserved it because you don't. Hmm. You never will. I never will. I can't be good enough. I've tried. I go about two minutes. And I'm back. Oh, Lord, please. You didn't see that, did you? He sees everything. He has the reward for us who follow him, guys. Jesus said that your heart and your treasure are linked together. Is your heart in your career? Is your heart in your bank account? Is your heart in fine restaurants? Is your heart in all of the pleasures of this life? Luke 18 tells a little story, and I'll do it quickly. The buzzer's about to go off. He says, a certain ruler said, asked Jesus, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? That's the reward. Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. See what I told you? I told you, he's the only one that's good. Amen. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. Well, that's a big one. You shall not murder. Whoa, that's another big one. You shall not steal. Eh, sometimes, you know, you don't give it back. You shall not give false testimony. Lying. Ooh, wow, got me there. I, I'm sure I've told one or two in the past minute or so. Honor your father and mother. I got that one. I'm, I'm, I got that one. Well, Dad. Uh, anyway, all these things, he said, I've kept since I was a boy, he said. So he's delighted, this rich young ruler. When Jesus heard this, he said, hey, one, th one little thing left. Sell everything you have and give it to the poor, and you'll have treasure in heaven. Then... Once you sell everything and go, come follow me. When, G, when he heard this, when this rich man heard this, he became very sad. Why? He was, he was very wealthy. Where was his heart? In his treasure, his wealth. His, his heart was in. Jesus looked at him and said, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel, either one or two hump, I don't care, to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter into the kingdom of God. And those that heard this, that, well, who can be saved? You can't get in a camel. I don't care how a baby camel can't go through the eye of a needle. They said, who can be saved? Jesus said, what is impossible with man? Guess what? It's possible with God. Peter said to him, we have left everything we have to follow you. And truly, I tell you, Jesus said to them, no one who has left their home or their wife or their brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come. There is a reward, folks, for doing it the way the Lord has told us to do it. Amen. Who are you doing things for today? For yourself? And, and this life on earth that will compete with destructible things? Or will the treasure of your heart be in serving the Lord, who yes. paid in full for the forgiveness from all your offenses to God? Yes. Do you want the treasure that fades away or the treasure that gets richer as we see that great day approaching, that glorious day when Christ will come in the clouds with his angels and he will call us home to our reward, the reward that is forever, Amen. the reward that is truly life everlasting in heaven, a place more glorious than you could even imagine. Decide today, as Joshua did, as he entered into the promised land so many years ago, after Moses had died, he said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. you got to make that decision. It's yours to make. Whatever you do, when you, when you make a decision, do you consider the consequences to the kingdom of heaven? Do you consider the consequences to your witness as a Christian? Do you, do you consider even the Lord himself? Would he approve of such a thing as what I'm trying to decide to do? Because that's where your heart is. If you can decide to do it with Jesus, then your heart is with him. If it's not with him, then it's not with him. There is no spiritual fence. People that sit on spiritual fences get cut in half. And they're, they're, not, they're not any good. They can't, that's not life, to sit on a fence. You've got to be in or you've got to be out. The lesson is yours today. I would like to see your heart become more fond of things eternal and less fond of things that are here that corrupt, where moths get to you, cockroaches come in and infest, and, and rust takes away your tractor stuff. They get lawnmowers. Lawnmowers, they rust away, don't they? 
Yeah. Oh, none of that is where my heart should be. Not even in that guitar, Carlos. Not even that. That is not, that's not going to be an idol. But our hope is in Christ, Amen. in Christ alone. He gave his life for us. The invitation is yours today. Would you guys go ahead and take the stage and give us a little bit of music while you're thinking about uh, everything that has been said today. We're going to offer an opportunity to come up and make your confession that, that you want to be a, a Christian, you want to be uh, baptized, you want to make a confession for these folks that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Because, you know, if He's not your Lord and your Savior, where are you? you where are you? You're waiting, I guess. Okay. Well, let's, let's, get it, let's get her done, as we say. Let's get her done.